So this is my absolute favorite topic. Before I tell you the topic, I'm just going to tell you why it's my favorite. And it's because <clears throat> I had the biggest aha moments when I first found out about this. I had the biggest light bulb go off when I found out about limiting beliefs. And I don't mean beliefs like Real Madrid is the best soccer team or the next year it's Manchester City, like these, these change, right? But I'm talking about fundamental limiting beliefs. And the way I've learned it, there's 12 of them. Like, I'm not good enough. I don't belong here. I'm not worthy. I'm, I need to be perfect. You know, there, there's a couple of those. And they're called fundamental limiting beliefs because they are, you can't break them down anymore. And I'll tell you why it's important is because here, if, if you want to be confident, if you want to perform under pressure, you got to know yourself. And when you know about your limiting beliefs, when I know about my limiting beliefs, I know myself better and I can react accordingly. I can take out the power out of these limiting beliefs because I see them I'm like, oh yeah, this is what's going on. I get it now. And I can make a different choice and put my power into something that I really want, that is not limiting, that is connected to the heart, that is a full expression of myself. And remember, why do we want to perform as athletes and coaches? Why do we want to perform under pressure? We want to perform under pressure so we can give more to ourselves, have a fulfilling sports career, but then also give more to our team, give more to our family, give more to all the people. There's like a whole economy that, that you have, you know, when you perform under pressure, when you're actually showing what you're truly capable of, right? And it's like everybody who ever believed in you and supported you. That's why we want to perform under pressure and you deserve it, okay? But you got to get to know yourself because you hear me a lot speak about um, thoughts and feelings aren't real, right? And what I mean by that is like they feel real to you, but they're not an accurate representation of what's really going on or what you are truly capable of. And I tell you why, because, and that's where the limiting beliefs are coming into play. And where in the video, we're going to go through where those limiting beliefs come from, how you pick them up. And you know, there's not a better or a worse limiting belief. Like they're, they're all limiting in a sense, right? But when you understand what they are, and you see it and you see how you, because it's a limiting belief, you try to compensate for it. And it's always the same compensation strategies that you have and that you follow, depending on what your limiting belief is, right? And my limiting belief is I'm not good enough. And <laughs> so I guess a lot of athletes, a lot of you know, people in the sports, biz, sports world, let's say not business, but in the sports world, they strong, they will strongly identify with, I'm not good enough. Um, a lot of high achievers and so on, right? But again, is, I'm just going to use that because I know that the best because it's my personal example. Um, and I think a lot of you will, will um, you know, resonate with that. But that being said, there's others um, and there's no better, no worse. They're all limiting. And the important thing is that we know what they are and we see that we see what's going on. That's where the power is. We see it then we can make a different choice. We're not reacting to it, but we're choosing, you know, how we want to move forward, right? And you can only choose if you see what's going on, okay? So, let's see. Limiting beliefs, you know, what, what, is, their, what is their purpose? Why do we have them? I'll tell you. It's because when you, I, everybody comes to this beautiful planet Earth, you come as this bright, creative, infinite star and you land on planet Earth. And specifically, you're landing in your mother's womb, right? And from that time on, you, you know, when you come, you, are, you don't know that you are separate from your mom. You don't know that you're separate from your dad or anything to be exact, right? And then you are born and in the first four or five years of, of being on, on a planet here, you develop an individual sense 
of, of existence. Because you got to appreciate you and I were individual beings, right? But it goes from being connected to everything through all time and space as pure creative spirit. Then you come to the planet and you enter your egoic vehicle, your body, your emotions, your, 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 you know, like your aura and so on, right? And it's your vehicle here. But because you're, you're learning that you're having an individual experience here, you start to create separation. You start to create separation from love, separation from success, separation from belonging, right? Because think about it, as a baby, right, we're, we're crying. I mean, I, I know one, one, one kid I actually have never seen crying, you know, just real quick and back to happy, happy. But, you know, as a baby, we can assume that we are in, in pain from time to time, right? And as a baby, this is all happening unconsciously because we don't, we're not thinking yet, right? We don't have a thinking mind yet. The brain is in, actually, you know, neuroscientists know that now, that the brain is in, uh, it's very slow brain waves, and there it's, you are in a hypnotic um, state, so to say, because that allows you to learn faster. Um, so you don't have a thinking mind. It's everything is go straight into the subconscious. That's why we become a product of our environment, right? We just imitate what we see and, and notice around us. So we create that individual sense of, of, of existence and we create separation because we hurt as a baby and we make up, we literally make up what that means about us. So like an example would be that happened with me, right? And I can't really say that I remember that, I, I, but my, my mother couldn't breastfeed me. And so, you know, I was hungry. I know that because she told me, right? And I was hungry often, crying often. And so me as a baby, that thinking I'm connected to everything, to my mom and like, we're all like one. And all of a sudden she's not giving me milk. And I'm, I'm you know, not getting the, the closeness, the love that I would expect, I guess, at the time. And I, I'm, I'm in pain and I ask myself, why am I in pain? Why am I hurting? And I start to make up a story what that means about me. It's like, well, my mother doesn't love me that much. I'm, I'm not worthy for to, to be here, right? And with the, I'm not good enough. You know, some of the limiting beliefs are mother-derived. Um, and some of the beliefs are, limiting beliefs are father-derived. And in a case of I'm not good enough, it's father-derived, right? And just... Something very important is that there is no, you know, there's not, no blaming to the parents because they're doing the best, right? And there is no perfect parenting. It happens to all of us. And that's actually the cool thing, right? The limiting beliefs, we all have them. We might have different ones. Like you may think, oh, I don't belong here and, 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 and I think I'm not good enough. But we all have those limiting beliefs because we all created an, as like an individual experience here on the planet. So we had to create the separation and we were all in pain as babies. So we made up a story of what that means about us. And in the case of I'm not good enough is actually is father derived. And it happens when your father gives you energy when you do something well. Right? So you start to, or I started to define myself, again, unconsciously, right? Start to define myself, oh, I'm getting the love and the attention and the energy of my dad if I, ah, say, learn how to do the, run the bicycle, learn how to walk, like all these things. I'm like, oh, good job, David, right? And so that's, that's how this one forms. And, you know, here's the crazy thing. It happens until we're about five years old. And then we, we develop our thinking mind, we go to school and all that. But those limiting beliefs, they are set in stone before you're five years old. And, you know, here's the thing. You, I, everybody, we didn't choose any of it. I mean, did you? It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not good enough. Right, right, right. Fuck no, right? We're not, we didn't choose it. But they are like set in stone. And i tell you why. Because we have, so, you know, we're talking about these two um, modes of awareness. We have perception, which is uh, our thoughts and feelings. And we have intuition, which is outside of thoughts and feelings, right? And that's what we got to wake up to, to realize the thoughts and feelings are, informed, are informing us 
in a very obvious way, but based on the past. And intuition, uh, instincts and all that is connected to everything through all time and space. And that's when you are very present when you're standing, you know, if a footballer, you're standing at the right time, at the right spot, because you're connected, all right? So that's the intuition. And here's the thing. This is the creative spirit that goes off intuition. And your ego, your egoic vehicle, the vehicle that you're using here on the planet, that is going off perception, thoughts, and feelings, okay? And your ego's only job is to give you orientation, right? It always wants to know how is it on this planet? What is going on here? It always wants to know how it is and it wants to orient itself. Now, you can think of the ego as, like think back in the days when, when um, I guess it was only men at the time, but I don't know. But when they were traveling across the, the ocean on like a big sailboat, right? And they didn't have a GPS and all that. Um, and they were traveling for, for weeks, freaking months probably, you know, teeth falling out and all that shit. But, you know, there was a, there was a, there was a somebody, a navigator on the ship, and they would use the stars to navigate and find out where they are very accurately, right? But think of this, if these stars moved all the time, the navigator could navigate. So the stars are fixed, and that's how the navigator can navigate. Now, your ego is like the navigator of the ship and it looks at the assumptions and the beliefs that you hold about life that were set in stone before you were five or six years old. And it looks at those and orients itself from these beliefs that you never chose. Like, let that sink for a little bit. You orient yourself off limiting beliefs or beliefs that were set in stone in your belief system before you could actually think. And so my question now to you is, is just, you know, and it is maybe your experience, right? That you notice, if you're a little bit aware, that you, the same patterns in your life, they repeat again and again and again. And that's why, because the ego wants to always prove that the assumptions that you have, the limiting beliefs that you have, that they are true. Because if they were wrong, it's like move, the stars are moving and it can't orient itself. Right? So he wants to prove them right. So if I have the belief I'm not good enough, I'm going to, all the actions that I take in my life, they will always prove, oh, he's really not good enough. And I was like, ah, oh, see, we knew it. So I set myself up, I'm, you know, this is like the, the classic chasing goals, high achiever, yo, go get it, you get it, and I'm like, not fulfilled. Okay, higher goals, more goals, do more, do more, right? And get there, oh, still not fulfilled, still not happy. And you keep doing, oh, well, that means I'm not good enough. I'm not happy because I'm not good enough. I gotta get better, I gotta do more courses, I gotta train more, <laughs> right? So that's with the not good enough, with the, somebody who has, I don't belong, does everything to belong. And then it's so like in your face, like, yo, you want to hang out? Hey, I'm making pizza. Come over. Hey, I got some beers, you know. Shouldn't say that because we're working with athletes. But anyway, a beer a day keeps the doctor away. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. But you get the point. And then it drives the people away because you're trying so hard. It freaks them out. And then the end result is you are alone. And it's like, ah, oh, see, I don't belong. I knew it. Right? So these patterns repeat, repeat in relationships, in, in, in anything in life anything, right? So that's why we got to know, we got to learn more about these limiting beliefs. And I'm telling you, I'll, I'll, I'll do more videos on this because as I said, this is my, I mean, it's my favorite topic because the aha moment was just so huge. And the way we're going to do that, and, and uh, I'm going to pick the limiting beliefs that, you know, are, are um, most common, let's say. And you know, I don't want you to be, oh yeah, this is me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read you, because again, think about it. We have a limiting belief and then we try to compensate for that. So if I'm not, if I'm not feeling good enough, I try, try to be good enough, right? I try to achieve. Um, 
And so there's a whole list of things of behavioral patterns that come out when you have the belief I'm not good enough. And that list, I'm just going to read you, not in this video, but in a, in a future, I'm just going to read you that list. And I, what I want you to do is like listen to it and see if that resonates. Because how it was with me is like, I'm, you know, reading the list is like always doing one course after another, check. High achiever, like never satisfied, check. Everything that looks easy, looks suspect, check. You know, like boom, 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 boom. That's me. Right? And it's so powerful because when you understand what's driving you, and then again, the thing is that all this speaks to you in thoughts and feelings, and it's all based on the past. Right? And that's the most important thing. It's all based on the past. And if your past, or no, let's put it another way, if you want your future to be different, to look different than your past, you got to be like ready to let go of thoughts and feelings and just assume and know that they're not a real representation of what you're truly capable of, right? And you want to start to connect with your intuition and with your instincts, with your creative spirit. And that's spiritual. That's where the spiritual concepts, they are so powerful. So powerful. So that's it, guys. It's uh, the freaking limiting beliefs. And you know, like we don't, and here's the, here's the best news of all. I almost forgot. The best news of all is that we, and how, how much you'll see, you'll feel relieved in a second. It's like we don't have to fix ourselves. We are not broken. There's nothing wrong with you if you're having limiting beliefs. In fact, I think it would be freaking weird if you didn't have limiting beliefs. I would not, I mean, you would be full of shit. Let's put it that way. I just know everybody has limiting beliefs. And here's the good news. We don't need to fix ourselves. We don't need to clear the limiting beliefs. We don't. Trust me, we don't. It's much simpler. The game plan is to see it, to be aware of it or become aware of it, and then choose differently. Use your will, use your capacity to choose and choose your intuition over your thoughts and feelings that are informed on the past. Okay, well, you know, we're gonna get there, but that's a beautiful thing. I hope you're relieved because, um, I mean, yeah, it sucks if you, there's nothing wrong with you, you know, we don't need to fix ourselves. And the people that tell you you have to, they're, they don't know. It's much easier. Right? Because there's people that spent their entire lives fixing themselves and they die trying to fix themselves. And we don't. We're not broken. It's part of the human experience. But what is, if you want to move forward in, in, and serve your highest good, you got to become aware of it. Awareness is the fuel of everything. You got to be aware of what's going on. Uh, and that's why, you know, even the Bible says, know thyself, know yourself. You got to know yourself. If you know yourself, if you can be yourself, if you can be authentic, all that, man, this will come automatic. Confidence is coming automatic. Performing under pressure it comes automatic, right? Uh, yeah, you don't want to work with like simple, simple tricks and all that. You want to like go all the way and really understand yourself because the beautiful thing is, is that these principle, uh, principles apply in all areas of life. It's not just in sports. And about the beautiful thing is that we can practice in sport. We're playing a freaking game, right? We, we can practice. Very privileged position. And once you figure it out, you just apply it in all areas of life. And you're going to have a fulfilled life. So fulfilled sports career, fulfilled life. Okay? Remember, we want to perform under pressure so we can give more to ourselves. We can give more to our team, to our family and everybody who, who believes in us. All right? Um, hey, if you think that this video about limiting beliefs and where they come from, how they form, if that helps... Uh, or if that would help, please share it with a, with a teammate, a friend, or, uh, or your coach. And um, I think that's all I got to say. Hi, um, there's a, as always, there's a free training on, yeah, on performing under pressure and how we can leverage spiritual concepts to, uh, you know, to be very, very present, to stop self-doubt and overthinking in, you know, faster than you, you can blink, basically, because these shifts, that's a beautiful thing. They happen like 
instantaneously and immediately. And you can just go on davidkarasek.com. Uh, it's free training. There's about 12 minutes. So I think it's worth it. I hope you like it. And um, nothing but love and peace. See you next time. All right. Ciao, ciao.